Hey there, Smokemaster D coming at you again with another Barbecue Buyer's Guide, this time to Charcoal Pig Cookers. All right, and we've got some chapter times here for you. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And um, if you want to skip ahead, uh, you can use these chapter times to do that. All right, and as we often do, we have some maps here, uh, and we remember that, especially with these heavier uh, smokers and grills, that your proximity can play a huge part in the price that you pay, uh, you know, when you're adding on shipping. Now, as we look at this map, we're going to notice that pig cookers are mostly a phenomenon of the United States East Coast, and that's a regional barbecue kind of thing. and Mostly, it's in the Carolinas is where they are produced as well as Amish country up there in Pennsylvania. So you're going to see Meadow Creek up there in New Holland, Pennsylvania, the Webster store in Lancaster, Big John's in Bellefonte, Pennsylvania. Now, if you go all the way down to South Carolina, we've got Low Country Cookers in Charleston. I really thought I was going to find more builders in South Carolina. Uh, and that was low country cookers is the only one that I found. Uh, now I know when I say this, you know, somebody's going to throw a builder up in the comments and I'm going to feel bad for not having found them. Uh, but sorry about that. Also, we have assassin smokers and grills in Macon, Georgia, uh, assassin smokers and grills and, uh, big Johns are kind of here on courtesy. They are not going to be featured heavily in this episode and you'll see why when I get to them. But let's take a look in at North Carolina and all the way on the east, very close to the coast there, we have Grillman Grills in New Bern, North Carolina, BQ Grills up in Elm City, and Carolina Pig Cookers in Sanford, and lastly, Original Grills out of Raleigh. Now, one thing to note is that Grill Billy's is a dealer for Meadow Creek, and it's their prices that I'm going to be using. So they're out of the Raleigh area, too. And now to continue with that, uh, this is a map of Meadow Creek dealerships. And you can see there my little house there uh, in Winston-Salem. It's showing you uh, my proximity to uh, and, and as I said, Grill Billy's is the, the one closest to me. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of pig cookers today, but this network of dealerships is probably going to represent the best price that you're going to be able to get for a pig cooker through Meadow Creek if you live anywhere besides the East Coast. Unfortunate as that may be, because because of of their network and the way that they can ship those out uh, it's going to be probably a lot more uh, expensive for any of these other ones so just keep that in mind if you're if you're living elsewhere all right and now for the basics of a pig cooker it's basically a vertical style smoker so you're going to have those air intakes on the bottom usually somewhere then, uh, you know, you're going to have a charcoal pan or drawer. Now, the drawer is a lot better because it will help facilitating adding coals to the smoker as you go. Because as we know, cooking a, a whole hog will take several hours. Now, you may not have that. You may have to try to put coals in through the top, which would be a lot more difficult. So definitely think about that charcoal drawer. Now, the grease deflector is an option that some of these cookers have. Several of them don't. They just let the, the drippings go um, right down into the coals, which, you know, is going to usually burn the drippings or, or you know, it's going to cause a little bit of flare up. Not a huge deal as long as there's enough space between uh, the coals and, and the grate up top. Uh, but one thing to consider now, the main grate is going to be at the top of the grill, right before you get to the hood or the lid. Sort of going to be like a tabletop. There's going to be, you know, nothing on the sides, and it's going to be 
easier to get a whole animal like a hog up there onto that tabletop surface of the grill. So that's a design feature that helps facilitate whole animal cooking, which is what a pig cooker does. And so on top of that, you're going to have the lid or hood, and you see that the pig is going to fit inside that hood, and you have the exhaust dampers on the top, and uh, they're going to let you know the, the smoke out that way. Now, take a look over there on the left side. I put up a simple sort of design for a burn barrel. Burn barrels are going to give you the best, uh, probably, coals, and fire for this style cooker. I know a lot of people use them. And the way they work is, you know, you take a 55 gallon drum or, or some sort of drum, you drill in some holes and create, you know, a sort of grid, usually with rebar, kind of, you know, a third of the way up. And you, you put your logs in, you set them on fire, and as they burn, they're going to create coals that are going to drop down through that grid. And you're going to have a, a sort of opening there at the bottom from which you can shovel out those coals into your charcoal drawer. So it's going to be whole wood coals that you have in your, your pig cooker. And that is going to give you some of the best barbecue. Uh, you see that it's set up on some cinder blocks. You don't sort of you don't want it to be sitting on the ground, really. So burn barrel, there are several YouTube videos out there on how to make those. So, you know, go look up one of those if that's what you want to do. All right, now a few starting notes. So for this episode, I limited it to grills in the style of, of a pig cooker with the longest dimension being between 40 inches and 60 inches. Now, 40 inches is a little less than four feet. 60 inches is five feet. So I did that just to narrow down our focus. Uh, and I think it's a good size for, you know, a whole hog uh, in this style. Number two, flipping pigs. Now you're going to notice that uh, some of these pig cookers have the option to have a flipping device. Flipping pigs was necessary when you didn't have a hood or a lid on a smoker. Uh, and, and the owners of Grillman Grills kind of explained this to me. If you don't have that lid, all the heat's going up on the top, going up from the bottom to the top and cooking, you know, whichever side of the pig you have facing the coals or the fire. Uh, so you really had to flip the pig to, you know, cook both sides. With the advent of a lid, however, both sides are gonna be cooking at once. So the whole flipping thing is kind of a carryover from those earlier pits. That being said, there are competitions in which the judges want to see both sides of the pig and it can help facilitate showing them. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but flipping pigs in general is a preference for some people, really unnecessary and really is only kind of necessary for competition cooking. Third, charcoal versus propane. I prefer coals and charcoal. Uh, as I showed before, I, I talked about the burn barrel. Propane is a lot easier, but I do believe that charcoal is going to give you a better product in the end, or having wood coals. Now, some of these companies that we're going to talk about, they have propane cookers. I'm not going to really cover those though. So if you want to look up their websites and see what they have in that vein, please do. Uh, but I think that charcoal is the way to go. I know that you can create barbecue with wood chips and propane, but for my money and my focus, I'm focusing on charcoal and wood and coal pig cookers. So just know that. Lastly, assassin grills. And with that, let's go to the next slide. The thing about uh, smokers is that you can find a lot of them that are to a size that they can accommodate a whole hog. Now, you see this hog cooker that starts at $5,000 there. 
And one of the first things you're going to notice is that it's not in the style of a pig cooker that I showed uh, on the basics page, right? And, and really the reason is it has that surrounding part that is, is going to make it a little bit more difficult to put the, the hog in, you know, if you're lifting it up or however you're doing it. And really it's not a huge deal uh, as long as you have that big door uh, but it is not a pig cooker in the sense of the style, right? So it's it's basically one of Assassin Smoker's grills that is just really big. Uh, also, it's I think it's insulated on all sides. So, you know, while this would be a great thing to cook a pig in, probably uh, we are going to leave it here and we're not going to cover it anymore in this episode. But just know that you can cook whole hogs on other smokers, and that's great. Uh, but we're going to be exploring this style. All right, we're going to start off with BQ grills. Now, you're going to see that they have two different styles. They're going to have the classic and the competition. Okay. Now, the competition is going to have the charcoal drawers kind of on the front side, or I guess you'd say the back side here, and they open up. For the classic, it's definitely going to be on the sides, either side of, of the grill, where you're going to have those charcoal drawers coming out. And I'm not really sure that it's, it's a big deal either way you do this. I suppose it might be a little bit more convenient just to have them on one side. Classic there is cheaper. Uh, so you're going to have that small at 3300 and, and these double prices here. The first one is for on casters, and the second one is, is for on a trailer. So BQ Grills offers all of these in both styles, casters or on a trailer. Uh, so 3300 or 3400 3700 or 3800 So just a $100 difference between casters and, and trailer for the classics. Now it's going to be $400 difference for the competition style. Uh, so 5,400 and 5,800 or 6,000 and 6,400 there for the five foot. Some of these features, they're going to have a swivel jack uh, for the trailer there. The piston cyst for the lid. So we're going to see that on most of the smokers that we're going to talk about today. But that will really help with lifting that lid up the charcoal drawer on either side. So these are the classic ones. And you're going to see also that there's a dual position for the drawer. So you can lift it up and put it closer to the grill top there or down below. And really, uh, you know, if you want to sear or you want to do some burgers or something that's not low and slow, having that option of putting it up, the drawer up closer is it's going to be helpful for that. So that's a nice feature. They are going to have the tell true hood thermometer, the easy open latches. So those are going to help clamp down that lid and keep the smoke uh, and heat where it should be. Uh, the sealed wood shelf, okay, to so sort of prep your meat or what have you, is, is going to be nice. All right, now we're going to take a look at some of the competition features. The A shield is a really nice one uh, for blocking those drippings from going into the fire and causing flare-ups so like it says it's this is for competition cooking in general i mean you can use it in your backyard too but the flare-ups may be something that you don't want affecting your cooking however you're cooking but maybe particularly in a competition the secondary shelf comes standard with this one so that's super nice um i won't be counting those extra inches though in when I'm doing uh, the comparisons and the graphs. So, but just keep that in mind that that's a, a nice perk for this one. Um, so two stainless steel side shelves. So I believe that's a new update for this year. Um, you're gonna have some side shelves. Now, when it is the ca caster version, like what we see there, instead of the side shelves, I believe they have uh, handles. So you're gonna lose a little bit in the way of prepping area there. Hopefully you can pull up a table or, or something for that. Now, again, the piston lid support, tell true thermometer, and also again, you know, the two position charcoal 
shelves. Now, one thing that we're going to see for the upgrades, and if you take a, a look over there, you're going to have that A shield that's come all the way out of the, the smoker. When you get these turning racks, they are usually going to make it so that they're going to have to make some changes in the grill, especially the bottom and, and what exactly can happen there. So for, for this instance, right, uh, they're going to have to take out that upper shelf for the charcoal drawer. Um, and so that's not going to be able to be there. And they're going to have to make the A shield one piece instead of, I guess, two pieces so that you could have, you know, different size for two zone cooking uh, and it's going to be eight hundred dollars for that turning rack it's going to to be an extra cost and then also they're going to have an upper charcoal pan rack that you can get for four hundred dollars so you can still get your coals up there near the grate uh, but it's something i think that you can take in and out uh, that will sort of replace that and keep that functionality but as you, as you can see, getting that turning rack makes things more expensive and more complicated. So unless you really feel like you need it, I wouldn't do it. Uh, just, just to be honest with you, uh, if you want these in stainless, you know, the turning rack is, will be an extra 2000 instead of 800, uh, you can get stainless steel for the top rack is 300 or 350 for the main rack an extra 400 or 500 uh, so those are all some upgrades that you might consider with this bq grill competition series and now we're going to talk about the carolina pig cookers and we got you know the four foot and the five foot here they usually come in black uh, but they're showing off their color options there so uh, the base price 28.95 or 31.95 uh, like I said, the colors, you can get red, regatta blue, or royal blue, and that's $195 uh, upcharge. Black is is what the regular price was there. The piston lit assist, again, for, for this one. Diamond plated shelves. So you're going to notice diamond plated steel throughout on this cooker, but uh, those, those shelves on the back, they're nice. Now, grease drain and heavy leaf springs, so... You're gonna want you're gonna want a place for the grease to drain out, especially if it doesn't get burned up by the coals. Now, there's the wood or charcoal drawer. Carolina pig cookers they make a lot of pig cookers with gas, so instead of instead of wood and charcoal, so their their focus is more on the propane a little bit than the charcoal and wood. So it's the same price, though, and, and we're going to see on the next page that one of the upgrades is that you can get the dual charcoal and wood for $750. Uh, and I'm going to come back to that in a second, but let's take a look at some of the other features that they have uh, for upgrade. You know, if you want some outside burners uh, on the front of the grill and, and really you'd probably want to have that dual system there and then add the dual outside burners because you're going to have to have a gas set up uh, to make all of that happen. And that would be $4.95 extra. The turning grate, we talked about it again, and this one's going to be $8.95. One of the interesting things about this turning grate, as opposed to all the others that we're going to see today, is that it focuses on raising the grates up. And I didn't really explain this for, for these turning grates before. The way that they work is that you are sandwiching your meat between two different grates and sort of strapping them together. So you might have like chains or something. Uh, so it's it's a great sandwich with the meat and then you turn. So that's how it works. And in this system, you lift it up and that's going to make it so you don't have to monkey around with all this stuff that's underneath. Really, I think that is the way that I would prefer it. Um, so you sort of just jack up either side. You can do it as one person, you know, and then you can flip. Uh, yeah, just 
making all these changes to, to the innards of the grill, really complicated and expensive. Uh, if you want a turning grate, this is the one that I would want uh, personally. So uh, the mounted toolbox up there for 350, spare tire 195, name plates uh, 175, and lettering and 125 added onto that. Not entirely sure why you'd want a nameplate without the lettering, unless you wanted to do the lettering yourself, I suppose. So altogether, that would be around 300. The warming rack, so that would be 195, and that can be a nice thing to add uh, some some space in your grill if you're going to do something really thin, like you know ribs or chicken wings. Chopping block, uh, you know, for whole hog barbecue, there's probably going to be a lot that you're going to want to chop up. So having that block could be a good thing, and they have it in two sizes there, small and large for 275 or 325. Now back to the wood and charcoal and propane. So when I was talking to the owner of Carolina Pig Cookers, uh, he told me that a lot of guys like to have that wood drawer and maybe they cook with that for the first few hours, and then you know they switch to gas and sort of let it finish on the idea that meat only takes on smoke for the first few hours. So that's not true. Meat can take on smoke flavor through the entire cooking process. If you don't think that, you know, please go take a look at this article by Meathead Goldwyn. And this article is on amazingribs.com. It's called What You Need to Know About Wood Smoke and Combustion. And the basic idea is there are reasons why when you cook, you might not be adding smoke later on in your cook, but it's not that it's not possible. Most of it has to do with, uh, you know, your fuel not producing smoke later on if it's sort of burned down and or, you know, you have to have moisture on the meat to get the smoke to stick, which in this style of barbecue, they do a lot of mopping. So, you know, you might be mopping every hour or however long to add that moisture to the meat and that'll continue adding smoke flavor. So now if you do, if you're wrapping something like pork butts or what have you, then you're not going to get any more smoke on the meat. And in that case, you know, having those propane burners there would be a lot more helpful and useful. Uh, but and maybe you don't want to add smoke the whole time. So maybe it would be useful then too. Uh, so those are, are my thoughts on this whole propane, dual propane wood thing. Would it be convenient? Uh, yes, it would be convenient to have propane as well. But I don't know if it's entirely necessary. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And uh, check out AmazingRibs.com. They have a lot of great stuff. All right, and now we're going to talk about Grillman grills. So we have um, two grills that fit our criteria here. They're two by four, which is going to be 1600. And we also have their charcoal pig cooker. Um, this is their wood one, wood and charcoal, and that's going to be 2800. Now they're going to have a flipping grate that is 240. One of the things that I want you to notice here is that they do not have the piston assist for the lid. It looks like, you know, you lift this thing up and and those bars over there are going to allow you to, to have it on a catch. I haven't gone too much into the thickness of metal here. I think everything up until now has had the, the base be um, uh, an eighth inch for for the metal and the hoods they usually change a little bit the metal on this grill is a little bit thinner um probably not going to be too big of a difference but uh, the it was 11 gauge for the ones previous and as we remember uh, the lower the number for the gauge the thicker it is so a little bit thinner metal and you're going to see that play out in the uh, weight when we get to the graphs as well but that being the case Having the piston assist may not be as necessary with this grill. So that's just something to keep in mind. And you're going to notice that um, we have 
three levels for the charcoal grates in this thing. So that's going to give you maybe even more control over temperature by, uh, you know, getting the coals up closer to the meat or further away. This picture up in the top left, I believe, is their gas cooker, but it was a better, better quality picture than the one that I have here in the middle. So I wanted to show you that, too. They sell this propane cooker through AgriSupply. And uh, they have a mailing center as well as several uh, locations, um, I believe from Georgia, maybe up to Virginia. So you may be able to, to buy this grill, the charcoal grill, too, through AgriSupply. I'm not entirely sure if their shipping would be better. Uh, maybe, you know, if they can ship to the store and you have a store near you, that would perhaps be a better way to go. And I'm not entirely sure. That'd be one thing that, you know, if you're interested in, in these Grillman grills, you might call their place directly and call AgriSupply and, and, and try to figure that part out. As far as shipping through their mail order system, like elsewhere in the country, also something to consider for Grillman grills. All right, now we have the original grills. Uh, they're a fairly new company there, 2019 started out. These grills are going to be the best made of any that we're going to look at today. Um, that being said, they're also the most expensive. So that OG Patio Pit 40 is $34.99.99. The OG 60 is uh, around about $9,000. Okay, so you see the lid latch there. Uh, that is stainless steel. Let's look at some more of these features. All right, for the OG 40 you're going to see that it has three settings for the shelves. So uh, just like the Grillman grills. So three is, is the most of any that we're going to talk about today. So uh, pretty cool that way. You're going to see uh, stainless steel grates in this thing. Stainless steel side shelves. And interestingly enough, they're going to have um, that charcoal chimney starter shelf. And we're going to see that again on the next slide. Uh, so we're going to talk about that more there. The 60 inch over on the right, it comes standard with the turning grate. So that $9,000 price, you get the turning grate. You can see the axle there for the turning grate in that top right picture. Don't have to worry about adding that on. All right, it also is going to have exhaust damper rain shield on top. That's stainless steel too. The never fail dampers. Uh, I think that you sort of push in that bar and it kind of comes up and then you swivel it. So it's kind of a locking mechanism is, is what it looks like for these dampers. They will work if they get mucked up with grease, you know, pig fat, whatever it is. They're still going to turn for you. So, like I said, the, the features there are, are pretty sweet. Uh, overall, very good build. You're going to see over here that chimney starter shelf. It has a little shelf beneath to catch the ashes for your chimney starter. You know, usually when I do a chimney starter, I just put it on the grill grate and, and start it that way. And whatever falls down into the bottom, you know, is, is fine. So... That's one thing, but the other thing to know is that if you're doing a really long cook with a pig or something, you may want to fill another chimney and, and put that in there. And then, you know, you can't put the chimney on, on the grate because the pig's going to be there, right? But if you're using a burn barrel, uh, that wouldn't be an issue. So, you know, it depends a little bit on the style of your cooking and, and what you want there. You know, you have... Uh, a lot of room there for utensils as well on the, the 40, uh, not so much on the 60 that I, I could see, uh, but they're a little bit different in their setup there as well. And now for low country cookers. So this thing comes out of Charleston, South Carolina. I wasn't able to get a whole lot on, on this cooker. Um, there's not a whole lot on their website. Not a whole lot on their Facebook page. Starts at 3800 It is entirely stainless steel. So that's nice. 
Now, I watched uh, a YouTube video of somebody who bought one secondhand, and there seemed to be a lot of baskets and stuff. Looks like there might even be a secondary shelf. The fact that it's made completely out of stainless steel is going to throw off some of the things in our graphs and charts. Stainless steel has better heat retention properties than mild steel. So you can use thinner stainless steel and still get, uh, you know, heat retention for what you're doing. So this thing is not going to weigh as much uh, as some of these thicker mild steel grills. And due to the fact that I couldn't get as much information, it's not going to play a prominent role in, in the charts when we're talking about it. I did want to make you aware of it, though. So it's there in Charleston. If stainless steel's your thing, maybe it's the way to go. It calls itself a party cooker. Uh, it looks like you really could throw a party on this thing. So keep that in mind for if that's what you want to do. And now we're going to talk about Meadow Creek. And Meadow Creek has been around far the longest since 1980 there. Uh, and they, they may have been making pay cookers all the way since then. For a lot of people, it's going to be the best option just because of their location in proximity to where these other makers are and the distribution network that they have throughout the country. Okay. So we've got the uh, PR42, 1595 base, PR60, 60 inch as opposed to 42 inches, 1862. And then if you want it on a trailer, it's over $1,000 extra to 3061. All right, and here we have some of the features for this thing. Uh, grease drain, you got the air dampers that are, are those slide. Charcoal pan and removable vent there on the bottom. It's going to have that grease plate or shield. Uh, I love a grease shield. So, you know, those drippings, do I want them on my coals? Sometimes, yes. You know, it, it adds to the smoke and flavor. So it's not always a bad thing, but I would love the option to have it either way, you know, have it drain out uh, all the way. All right, and now we have some of the upgrade options. So they have quite a few and, you know, they've been making these things since 1980. So they've had a lot of time to, to come up with these upgrades. On the top left, you're gonna see that charcoal grill pan. So they don't have a way to take the charcoal pan from the bottom and bring it up unless you buy this extra add-on uh, for 140 for the uh, 42 or 180 for the 60 inch. You know, a lot of the other ones, that's just kind of standard. But for this, it's an upcharge. You can get that wagon chassis down there for 528. You know, if you want to be able to pull the PR60 around, it's actually 528 for both the PR60 or for the uh, the 442 as well. If you want the pull-out charcoal drawer, now I've talked about pull-out drawers quite a few times here. If I were gonna get this thing, I would really definitely consider this upgrade. It's uh, 299 or 367. Uh, if you're doing a long cook with a hog, uh, getting that charcoal down there to, to replenish it, I would think would be sort of a nightmare uh, doing it without this drawer. You'd need some friends to lift up that pig, you know. Uh, so I don't know that I would ever buy one of these things without it. That's just me. Extra tire uh, for the trailer version is going to be 201. The rib rack, oh man. How many more ribs can you do with this rib rack, right? So that's uh, 166. So if you like doing ribs and you want to do, you know, a lot of them, definitely uh, worthwhile. You know, I might even see about getting that rib rack for for a different smoker. So we also have a second tier grate up there for an upcharge, 326 for the 42 or 440, and we've got a cover 128 or 213. Um, also solid tires for the caster version is plus 68. I would definitely consider doing that one too. These ones that fill with air, there's gonna come a time when, when they're no good anymore. The solid tires, they're going to go for a lot, lot longer. 
And the eight inch casters on a stand would be 220. Big John grills and rotisseries. They make a pig cooker in the style that we're looking at in this episode. They only make one and it is six feet long, which is outside of our parameters. So I am not adding it to what we're doing in the, the charts. And I'm not going to be talking about it any more than what I am right now. Wanted you to know that it exists. They are much more focused on rotisserie than they are on pig cookers and Big John's, uh, you know, grills and rotisseries. So this is kind of a one-off for them. Uh, but if you live up there, maybe that would be good for you. So be that as it may, Big John's. All right, and now we have the Webstaurant store, okay? And their Backyard Pro 60-inch charcoal wood smoker grill. It's going to have a cheaper price unassembled, $13.59, or assembled, it's going to be $16.49. Yeah, you can buy this thing online. Being that it's unassembled or assembled, there's a, a video that shows how to assemble it. It's mostly screwing these things together, right? You know, having those kind of seams and holes is not good for a grill. You usually want to have it welded together. This thing's cheap. The price is cheap. The build is cheap. <laughs> you know, if cheap is what you want, this is this is it. Or, you know that thirteen fifty nine. It's not not bad. The heat retention on this thing isn't going to be terribly good. You're going to want to use it in good weather, generally uh, during the winter. Not so much during a storm. Not so much. Just keep that in mind for, for what this is. In this style, then, then maybe it's for you. Uh, it does have a pull-out ashtray, and, and you're going to see that there are intake dampers on these doors that are on either side. So the doors are going to facilitate you adding charcoal, but it's not pull-out. So a little bit different, not terrible overall. You're also going to notice that you can raise and lift the grate so instead of raising the charcoal pan or drawer uh, to get those coals near to the meat it's reversed in which you can lower the meat to be closer to the coals so the holes for the lifting the rack are going to be some heat loss as well you know uh, some of the heat's going to be going up out of of that thing at the top but it's going to create a situation in which uh, you're going to have to put something in those if you want to dampen out the coals at the end of your cook, right? Air is going to go through there and and you're just going to either have to burn out the whole coals. You're going to have to stuff something in in those holes on the side. And now we've made it to charts. There we have the base price chart or casters okay so yeah that backyard pro 60 way down there at the bottom uh basically i just added on sales tax most of these i can pick up the backyard pro 60 ships for free i believe making it again a very spend thrift option but that meadow creek there is, is going to be next uh the grooming grills after that pr60 the classic, then the OG patio, uh, classic medium, the PDQ party cooker, and then the BQ grills competition four and five feet way up there at the top. And then uh, the base price for the trailers. So that Grillman charcoal pig cooker is going to be down there on the bottom, followed by the Carolina pig cookers four foot. Meadow Creek PR60, uh, Carolina Pig Cookers 5, BQ Classic Small, BQ Classic Medium, B BQ Competitions 4 and 5, and way up there at the top is going to be that OG60, which is super expensive. Now, for the weight, and uh, remember for the weight, it's going to have a lot to do with how much steel is there, the thickness of the steel, and and more steel means more heat retention because of thermal mass so keep 
in mind the the weight as, as part of that equation. Now that PDQ party cooker, we already talked about it being made out of stainless steel, which is going to have better heat retention qualities, but it's 200 pounds. Grooming grills two by four after that, the PR42, the Backyard Pro 60. So strangely enough that the, the Pro 60, it's, it's bigger than the PR42, but the Pro 60 uh, does way more than, than the PR42 which maybe, you know, could be a sign that you might want it over, over the PR42. Just some thoughts. The Meadow Creek PR60, OG Patio Pit 40, BQ Classic Small, Medium, Competition 4 foot, and then 5 foot. Now the trailer weights. So, uh, and, and as I have up there, note some of the weights are approximated by the company, so they, they may not be exactly on. We got the Grillman Charcoal Pig Cooker uh, PR60T, the Carolina Pig Cooker 4, BQ Classic Small, then Medium, Carolina Pig Cooker 5, BQ Grills Competition 4, then 5, and then lastly, the OG60. On their website, they said over 1,200 pounds, so I'm not entirely sure how much more. The same with the, uh, the 40 on the other page is like over 500. So I guess they didn't want to give exact weights. So like I said, approximated by the company uh, on some of these. So the weights, not entirely exact, which I, I want exact numbers, but can't always get them. So that's unfortunate. All right, dollar per pound. Ace and then to me. So Backyard Pro, yeah, it's dollar per pound. And, and so uh, as a... As a standard for value, that's it's pretty good. Pretty good for the Backyard Pro 60. PR60 after that, then the BQ Classic Medium, Small, Competition 5, Competition 4. So some of the bigger ones are going to have better dollar to pound, right? Then uh, the PR42 there, the uh, OG Patio Pit 40, Grooming Grills 2x4, and then, of course, like I said, the PDQ par party cooker, just going to throw it off quite a bit, quite a bit there. Dollar per pound trailer. So the Carolina pig cooker five foot has the best dollar per pound. The four foot after that, BQ classic medium, small, competition five, competition four, the PR60 uh, trailer, the Grillman charcoal pig cooker and lastly the og60 all right now square inches no secondary so i didn't add on secondary inches which i believe comes with the bq grills competition cookers so just keep that in mind in fairness we're looking at cooking whole hogs here and you can't cook a whole hog on a secondary shelf so we are just looking at uh, base. So we got the PR42, PDQ Party Cooker, OG40, Backyard Pro 60. So that Backyard Pro 60, it's it's a full five feet, but it's not very wide. So just keep that in mind. Grillman Grills 2x4, Meadow Creek PR60, BQ Classic Small, Carolina Pig Cooker 4, OG60, Grillman Charcoal Pig Cooker, BQ Grills Competition 4, BQ Classic Medium, uh, Carolina Pig Cooker 5, and the BQ Grills Competition 5. All right, and now we have dollar per inches squared for the caster. And the Backyard Pro is again going to have it. $1.23 per inches squared there. A Meadow Creek PR60, Grooming Grills 2x4. BQ Classic Medium, BQ Classic Small, Creek PR42, BQ Grills Competition 5, Competition 4, OG Pit 40, and then the PDQ Party Cooker. So yeah, that Backyard Pro, it has a lot of price advantages to being, you know, screwed together as opposed to welded. Now, dollar per inch is squared trailer. So we're going to have the Carolina Pig Cooker five foot 
is Grillman Charcoal Picker next. Uh, Carolina Picker four foot. BQ Classic Medium, BQ Classic Small, Meadow Creek PR60, BQ Grills Competition 5, Competition 4, and the OG60, uh, highest dollar per square inch in the trailer. Ratings, or rankings, I should say. I took all the factors that we just looked at, and I made a nine-point scale, zero to nine, and I took... The grill that had the worst, like, oh, say that, uh, you know, the OG60, you know, had highest price. So it would have got a score of zero on price. And then the best one, you know, I can't remember exactly which one it is. It would have a, a full score of eight. And then I modulated uh, the relative difference of all the other grills on, on that uh, nine point scale between those two depending on the difference, you know, the relative difference between the top and bottom. And then I added all those scores up and I got these rankings. So uh, for casters, and I know the picture is not of a caster over there for this BQ Classic Medium. They have no pictures for it that I was able to find, but they do sell it. They do sell it. And then after that, we have the Backyard Pro 60 inch. Uh, below that, the PR60 the bq grills competition five foot the bq classic small competition four foot grillman grills two by four the meadow creek pr42 and the og patio pit 40 coming in there uh, very low now one of the things you're going to notice on here is that it has no features so these are just the bare data points that we have on this so far it doesn't uh, take into account things like the seams on that uh, Backyard Pro 60 and how you're screwing it together, right? So anything that has to do with a design feature, that data is not going to pick up on, right? So this is just the raw data telling us that uh, as the best deal, this is the ranking and it's a little interesting that you, the pro 60 isn't number one and that the bq classic medium has taken that spot so one thing to consider when getting these but we are going to factor some of that in uh first though we're going to see the rankings for the trailers and uh the carolina pig cooker five foot trailer is going to be at the very top right um and then below that, BQ Classic Medium again. So that was the first, the number one pick on our last one. This is the trailer version. Then the BQ Grills Competition 5, Carolina Pig Cooker is four foot, BQ Classic Small, BQ Grills Competition 4. Then the Grillman Charcoal Pig Cooker, the Meadow Creek PR60, and the OG60. Now remember that we are looking for the best price for the weightiest grill and, and the most cooking space. So all those things are sort of playing into this. And this is how that is, is working out. All right. And now we're going to take into account some of those features, but we're going to have to assign the value. So we're going to look at that and we're going to draw a distinction between backyard catering and competition, right? So um, we're gonna we're gonna look at it this way for the casters first, and I've assigned values over there. And just so you know, you might assign different values. So if you want to kind of do some of this math yourself, uh, we can you can do that. The one thing is is that I did add in some things for the cost to uh, help some of these grills smokers out. Okay. And where you see those brackets, like the Meadow Creek PR60, the charcoal grill pan, I added that as well as the pull-out charcoal drawer. And then I figured the additional cost into the ratings from before. So that might be a little hard on the math. But, um, and I also did that for the uh, PR42 down there. So adding those, I felt reasonable to give them a score of 4.5. Four for the peak BQ Classic Medium, 
with that wood shelf, the e easy open latches, the drawers with the two positions. Uh, I, I gave the Backyard Pro 60 a zero. The BQ Grills Competition 5 I gave a six um, for that A Shield, the piston assist, you know, all the, the wonderful things that it has. Stainless steel shelves, uh, four for the small, just like the medium above it for the BQ Classic. Same score for the competition for the Grillman Grills 2x4. I gave a 3.5. No weight assist for, for the lid. Maybe you don't need it. I, it has thinner metal, so heat retention is going to be maybe a little bit less. Probably not too bad. The three levels for charcoal shelf, though, um, are good. I like that. Uh, but uh, not a whole lot of design features that are really wowing. Uh, now the Meadow Creek PR42, uh, I gave the 4.5 just like the one above. And then the OG Patio Pit 40, it has the most awesome stuff. Anybody who sees it is going to say the same thing. Uh, it's really been designed well, so it gets the full eight. Now, um, and these are the new rankings. As you see, the uh, OG Patio Pit 40 didn't climb that much on our on our rankings here you know it's just so expensive that you would have to you know count those design features a couple times to make it so that you would say hey this is worth it more than any of these these others it's the best looking on here right um it looks really snazzy and, you know, if you have a whole lot of money and you want something that looks really snazzy, that's the grill. Uh, the uh, PR42, very much less snazzy and, and not as good a deal. But, you know, the Grillman Grills is, is still going to be ahead of it. One of the things over here is, is looking at the prices as well. Most people have, have price in mind, right? So the best deal up there is, is that classic medium from BQ. Uh, and if your budget is 3700 you know, maybe that is what you'll get. Uh, it's, it's a better deal than the Competition 5. It's a better deal than the Small. Um, but they're pretty close, right? Then, uh, you know, you can think of, well, I don't have $3,700. You know, some of these other ones that are not as good a deal cost more, Right. Uh, maybe if you only have 3300 the small is what you'd be getting. Uh, if you only have 2400 you're bumped all the way down here to the Meadow Creek. And again, you know, distance is going to play a big factor into this. If you're really far away from the Carolinas, that, uh, that PR60 is just going to climb up and up the list for you. And uh, unfortunately, that's just how it, it is because you're going to have a lot better access to it. But do look into, you know, what the shipping costs are for some of these. Maybe, you know, if you can stretch it a little bit, you could get get those. But the, the value diminishes there if, if that's what we're looking for on cost. And, and cost isn't the only thing to think of. Cost has to be balanced with what your needs are for the size too, right? So, you know, if you go back to the, the square inches chart, probably going to see that the, the the two by four here, um, the PR42 and the OG Pit 40 are, are a little bit similar. So say that you don't need to cook for huge, huge crowds uh, and you decide that you want something smaller, you know, the best deal could be this uh, Grillman's Grills two by four for you. All right. So, so keep all these things in mind. And now we're going to take a, a similar look to the trailers for backyard and uh these are going to be the rankings that i i assigned so the carolina pig cookers i decided that we would add the gas and i featured that price into the statistics that we're going to see on the next slide uh but with that i gave it a 6.5 the gas is convenient you know if you have a whole bunch of pig butts and you decide to wrap them just turn the gas on let them go uh if you want to turn it on before then say you got to go do something also super nice right you don't have to watch uh watch the coals and, and replenish them so it's it is convenient 
Uh, then, then after that, we have the classic medium, the wood shelf, easy open latches, drawers, the positions, the pistons, both the classic and small there. Uh, I gave the full eight to the competition five. It has that A shield. I like the A shield. Uh, the piston assist has endless steel side shelves, easy open latch, two drawers, two positions. Now, why did I assign the eight to the competitions instead of the OG 60? Um, they only have one shelf position for the charcoal. Okay. Uh, so I gave it a six. I like having higher shelf positions. It really kind of limits it as a grill. Uh, you're not going to be able to, I don't think that you'd be able to get a good sear on, on those stakes. If you're going to throw it on there, it, it makes it more of a smoker. Now you could try to shovel a whole lot of charcoal in there and that'd be great, but it, uh, it doesn't have the versatility. It has a lot of amazing things, but not that. So I felt like, you know, I couldn't give it as high ranking as I might have. It's just two points and it's added in with all the rest, you know. But uh, let's take another look at a few of these others. Uh, Roman charcoal pig cooker, three, three levels for the charcoal shelf. It has a shelf on the front. Uh, no way to set assist for lifting the lid. Maybe not totally necessary. 4.5 there. Uh, the Meadow Creek, I gave it three. Uh, it doesn't have a side shelf. So, you know, even adding in these things, it kind of has a little bit of a deficit. There's a lot of upgrades you can get, but it's just piling on more and more on the money side, you know, and, and we could have gone further on, on upgrades for it and seen how the money played out, but decided to just leave it as it is. Um, I think it's, it's a good one. It's a good, uh, grill. If, if Meadow Creek is the most available to you, you're probably going to get a really good product, but, um, I think these others have a lot more style and versatility in, in some ways that should be considered too. When we go to the rankings, the BQ grills competition five takes the top, uh, and, and it takes the top from getting that eight, right? So if there's any point in there where you say, well, maybe I don't like it as quite having the best features ever, uh, you know, and, and one of those things is, is its price, $6,400. Uh, I think that uh, you, you could be very happy with the Carolina Pig Cookers 5-foot. Now, one thing to know about the 5-foot is, of course, that it also only has one shelf position. Uh, if you turn on the gas, maybe that'll sear your steak, uh, you know, uh, depending on how, how much you can turn it up. And I'm, that's that's one point I'm not entirely sure on, uh, but that uh, BQ Classic Medium right up there. So these 35, 36, 37, very close here. Uh, you know, I think for having a trailer, I think that that uh, Classic Medium, which, you know, is it's only a hundred hundred forty five dollars cheaper than uh, the Carolina Pig Cooker five foot. It's kind of. It's close. It's very close. The uh, then we have the competition for the small classic Carolina pig cookers for the uh, Grillman charcoal pig cooker, uh, and then of course all the way down there at the bottom the OG sixty. It is really an amazing grill. Uh, it's uh, you know the best of the best, but for value it's. For the backyard, um, I just don't see it. But we're about to talk about competition where I really could see it. So here are the competition trailer prices. Now I've added in, and you can actually add in the uh, Turner for the Grillman charcoal pig cooker. It's going to take out all those those shelves that we liked for the, char for the charcoal. You're probably only going to have one shelf after that, and they're going to have to make some modifications. But it's just a 250 upcharge. Uh, we have the Carolina Pig Cookers, um, and that those are going to be the new prices. Turner added to the P BQ Grills competitions. 
And then still right at the top is the OG 60. And, you know, this is a thing that, you know, I, we could try to assign values, uh, but really when you're, when you're looking to compete, you have to decide what you want. Is, is it worth it to have the best, the best grill, which would be the original grills? The features on it, they, those never fail dampers are amazing. One thing I have to say is I do like the Ace Shield on the BQ grills. And I do like the way that you can, you have gas and you can turn the Carolina pig cookers. It's, this is a hard decision. I have to say it, um, that, you know, there's the money side and maybe, maybe you're not worrying about the money if you're competing. I know that, uh, some people have won probably with, with all these grills. I know BQ grills has done well. And I think there's a TV show that, uh, attests to that. Uh, but I think that people have won with the Carolina pig cookers as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if people had with the original grills, although they are a bit newer. They look like they are, are um, designed with high performance in mind uh, and reliability, which is another part. Uh, you know, the Grillman grills, I'm not certain about, uh, but I like Grillman grills. Uh, I, I wish I could have helped you more, given you a more definitive answer for your competition needs, but um, I guess I can't. I think that cooking whole hog barbecue is really cool. I know that Central Texas barbecue is the hottest thing, but give give this a try. And I want to give it a try too. I think I might try to build my own pit, like a brick pit uh, in the near future. And hopefully I'll be able to show you that on this channel. So, you know what? Thank you for watching and, uh, you know, go get your smoke on you.